Hi, I'm Elliot, a writer, and I'm typing out The Great Gatsby. Why? Because that was something Hunter S. Thompson did because he wanted to see what it would be like to write a masterpiece. Now that I have some time on my hands, I figured it would be a good opportunity to try it myself. So join me every Saturday until I finish the whole novel. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Typing Out the Great Gatsby with me, Elliot. And um, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. My neck kind of hurts. If you recall from previous episodes <laughs> that my dog sleeps in the same bed with me and he fucks up my neck sometimes because he scrunches right up against me. So I have this orb. Gonna massage it. I don't know. I feel pain, but I don't know if it's helping. So, that is the my physical pain update. Any doctors out there? Can you prescribe <laughs> prescribe a a less cute dog for me? <laughs> so, welcome back. Welcome back. A nice, beautiful summer day, perfect day to type The Great Gatsby. Um, hope you are doing well. Hope your neck isn't hurting as bad as mine. Um, this movement is actually all right. If I have to make, like, if you were over there, like if the camera was over there, this would be a much tougher day. It's on this side, so I could just, I could kind of lean into it, you know? No one, you can't even tell that I'm in pain. Um, but, you know, suck it up, suck it up. You know, I always compare this typing out The Great Gatsby to going to the gym. And I just, in the back of my head, I have this um, drill sergeant E type character. Sergeant Elliot is his name. He has a mustache <laughs> and a big hat and a, w and a whistle. And uh, he's my personal trainer during the course of this typing thing and uh, I could just hear him shouting at me to motivate me it's like come on you got a little little neck pain to stop you and I'll be like almost almost stop me always almost I almost always uh, not do this until I actually like turn on the camera and open the book I'm like I could stop doing this. I, I don't need to do this. I don't owe anybody anything. I'm sorry for every all my loyal viewers here, but I don't have to do this anymore if I don't want to. And that's, that's so true with uh, all things creative, especially writing, because no one, no one needs another book. I like, uh, just for the fun of it, the other day, googled how many books like exist a lot. I don't remember the exact number, but it really made you question, um, especially as a writer, like, why am I doing this? The world simply does not need another book. All we need is The Great Gatsby, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's only one book. The holy book, as they call it. <laughs> well, I've wasted a lot of time already goofing around. My body. Um, I think we should get started because this is this is another big episode. Um, last week, I wanted to look for um, evocative writing, evocative sentences, evocative um, prose of any sort. I couldn't find any, at least that I would consider evocative. Last episode was kind of a it was a weird space to be in, in terms of this novel, not in terms of physical space. Uh, but this week, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna look for filter words. Filter words, what are filter words? Filter words are words, it's actually a very common writing mistakes. I make them. In fact, it's almost impossible for me to write without 
using some of these words. And these words are, for example, these are the common ones. Uh, noticed, seemed, spotted, saw, realized, felt, thought, wondered, believed, knew, decided. These are filter words. Why they are bad, or why they weaken your writing, is because they create more distance between what is happening in the story and the reader. So when you use these words in your writing, the reader doesn't get to experience it. The reader has to, you know, visualize someone else experiencing it. Um, so it's all about the uh, show don't tell type of rule. When you're using these type of words, these filter words, you are telling. You're telling, you're not showing. And so second drafts, third drafts, I think they're a third draft thing. Um, you cut them out, cut them out. And uh, I'm trying to be more aware of when I use these words or what is causing me to use them. And hey, maybe all this is wrong. And Fitzgerald uses these words all the time. We're gonna find out in this episode. Sort of. I'm going to have it leaning here because I need to reference these words because memory, memory, not so good. Not so good these days. <laughs> Every day. It's kind of, have you ever tried to remember something that happened three months ago now? Impossible. Anything that happened in April, May, June is kind of like all blend, blended in together. That's, that's like one month, everything that happened there. So yeah, good luck. Good luck remembering a few simple words. Or when, or when I'm introduced to new people now, that, that is hard. <laughs> I am not ready for that. I'm not ready to meet new people. Not right now, not during the pandemic. Let's begin. All right. So, okay, so last time we left off, um, Nick is, I think he's over at Gatsby's place and Tom shows up. And now they're gonna interact with each other. Let's see what happens. that became might might have been a filter word it might be but it's not on my list I feel like a like a police investigator at the moment trying to like a like um <laughs> like Jake Gyllenhaal's character in Zodiac I feel like that and if you're wondering if I'm hurting I am it's also you know, we when we think about writing, we think about it in like a cerebral way that we're, it's all in our head. It's actually a really physical task. Um, you have to make sure your body is um, well oiled. <laughs> yeah, you gotta maintain it so you could be a writer. Without your body, your mind cannot function, right? Okay, they're just Having small talk, that's fine. 
I feel like uh, my patience as someone consuming a story is so much shorter now that I've been typing out this book. It's just like, come on, let's go. Something exciting happened. I get that there's some sort of pacing happening here, but it's being lost to me uh, because I'm not I'm not reading it. I'm typing it, so it's a whole different experience. Okay, be very nice. Be very nice. Very. Filter words are usually um, verbs too, so keep that in mind. It's like an extra verb that happens. What am I doing? Where am I? <laughs> I'm not moving fast today. Don't. You stay for supper. Oh. My <laughs> turning my head actually kind of hurts now. I wonder if I could just not look back. Like a pro typist. I don't want to make mistakes either. Even holding it. I hope this complaining that I'm doing is as entertaining for you as it is for me. <laughs> I don't like complaining. I don't like it. I don't like the way I am when I complain. for supper. Thoughts looked at me questioningly. Come on, go go to dinner, Nick. 
Can't believe this scene is lasting so long. It's funny what um, he chooses to like rush forward, like skip completely, and what he chooses to like, you know, force us to indulge in. Even though I wouldn't say this is anything indulgent. Turning the page, the best part of this whole experience. I'm on page 100, yo. That's a milestone. If you're wondering how many pages there are, uh, 172. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot still. Oh, God. Locked. Checking, checking passport. Oh, you pass. You could pass. I think the <laughs> I feel like I use so many of these words. I'm surprised I haven't seen one yet. Which I that's probably a testament to the writing. To not be able to see one. I hope I don't see one. I hope I see none of these filter words because that would that would be good evidence. Oh, I believe. Nope, oh, that's dialogue though. Believe is one of the filter words, but I guess when it's in uh, dialogue, it's okay. It's like when you're working and you're giving your ideas at work, especially when you're working from home now, if you're working from home or you're answering an email or you're, someone's asking for your feedback or even when you're just talking, you often begin with, I think, or I believe, or I feel. It's like cut all that out. And it's, it's like I, I noticed or just go straight to what you want to talk about because it weakens it when you go like, Hmm, I think, you know, that the design should be green instead of blue. It's like, or you could say it with authority and confidence. It's like, the design should be green instead of blue for this reason. And it's not about your thinking. We obviously know your thinking because um, you wrote this down with your mind, body, hand. So you don't need to add that in and um, I think it goes with creative writing as well so keep that in mind think about it that way I should start approaching it that way too that kind of makes sense to me uh, You could hear that. Police cars have the wackiest sirens sometimes. It's like, why do you choose to use that one instead of that one? I imagine them having like the soundboard where they just like pick, and sometimes police officers just actually want to be DJs and they're just like, boop, 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 boop. that's a comedy bit I'm working on. <laughs>
they mean all kinds of crazy fish. <laughs> I'm just gonna start saying that from now on. Those crazy fish. Doesn't sound cool when I say it. Nothing sounds cool when I say it. I've never said anything where I'm like, wow, you're so cool. <laughs> Not that I, I think that character was trying to be cool. I'm trying to be cool, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I just want things to say that'll make me cool. Gatsby, <laughs> please. There's gotta be something in here. <laughs> the answer's gotta be in here. So that interaction is pretty awkward. Tom doesn't seem to like Gatsby for obvious reasons. They're just trying to be polite to each other. Ah, a cool nod. I imagine it like that. <laughs> My neck. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not a cool nod. That's whatever the opposite of cool is. Lame. He just jumps so quickly to different scenes. It just makes it happen. Just like, hey, this character felt this thing, but now in this future event, this is gonna happen. Just so simple. It's actually interesting because I feel like this chapter already transitioned time three times already. Yeah, so don't be afraid to do that if you need to. Oh, jeez. Sudden noises making me turn my head. Felt. Felt is uh, a filter word.
Well, it exists. How would you fix it though? They were the same people, or at least the same sort of people. The same profusion of champagne, the same many color, many keyed commotion, and I felt an unpleasantness, unpleasantness in the air, a pervading harshness that had been there, hadn't been there before. I mean, it's fine the way you're using it. Perhaps you could change it to, but there was an unpleasantness in the air. I guess so. I guess you could change it too. But there was an unpleasantness in the air instead of, but I felt. I don't know. I'm not the editor. <laughs> Just something to notice. Right? Especially this, since this is what we're trying to learn, trying to improve. It doesn't have to be fixed. You just need to how, know how the machine functions. You're not really trying to reverse engineer anything. You just want to see like, hmm, that's a cool machine. That Tesla, how does it work? You don't need to build it yourself. You just need to know, oh, okay, that's nice. This, this Tesla over here, cool. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. You don't want to get too deep into it. I'm not trying to rewrite The Great Gatsby, like improve it. That's not what I'm doing. Um, I was thinking this thought in my head. <laughs> I think, no. Can I cut that out? It would be funny if, um, like another great writer that's alive, I guess, kind of did their own riff on The Great Gatsby, sort of like how musicians would cover music. Like, imagine, like, <laughs> like Hurt by Johnny Cash, the Nine Inch Nail song. Six nines, no. Yeah. Um, imagine if, I don't know, who's a famous writer right now? Like S Stephen King. Imagine if Stephen King decided he wanted to rewrite The Great Gatsby. Same story structure, just he chooses the words in the scenes. I think that would be a very interesting experiment. Obviously, it won't happen for a multitude of reasons. I like music that way is so much easier to collaborate with. Novels is just such a such a beast of a project. I guess this is a fine place to pause for a moment and do this week's Fitzgerald fun fact or the Gatsby fun fact. Never really had a title for this segment of the show. Doesn't really matter. Um, fun fact of this week is, <laughs> this one's weird. There is a theory, um, like a fan theory, that Gatsby is a black man, um, right? Yeah, I, yeah, let me explain. There are references in the books, in the book, 
uh, regarding his tanned skin and his close cropped hair and that he also has 40 acres and a mansion which is uh, 40 acres is just something that is given to ex-slaves apparently I don't know too much about this history but because of these little little bits of information in the story uh, people <laughs> conspiracy theories um, believe that Gatsby uh, Fitzgerald actually intended Gatsby to be a black man. Um, obviously there are many other uh, clues and whatnots information in this novel that proves otherwise and um, it's <laughs> I, I don't think he's a black man. <laughs> Let's just say that. Let's just say that. Um, I like I like these fan theories actually. <laughs> it makes it makes it feel like, oh, no matter whatever you create, people can give their own twist on stuff and make up something, and no matter how clear something is, there are still these little shadows, shadowy spots that people can be like shining a light on it, hoping to find something unusual. Or you could be like J.K. Rowling and just kind of <laughs> spoil everything you created by revealing, you know, little Easter eggs that were never really there in the first place. You could be like that too. Um, I don't think this is something writers should consciously try to do, like hide Easter eggs in stories or not reveal, be so vague that conspiracy theories can happen, they're gonna happen if your book is popular enough. It's sort of like Stanley Kubrick and his Shining and everybody's trying to make connection with things. I think it should be approached that way where it's so subtle that um, it takes like someone really studying it to actually find things. Um, but even then, it's like, okay, that's just like one person's connection to whatever and uh, sometimes as a writer you don't even know what you've made right you, you kind of just make it and then people put their own interpretation to it it's, it's like um, <laughs> that's what art is isn't it the hidden meanings and stuff like uh, the Beatles White Album, um, Revolution 9, is that what? Revel Revelation? Revolution 9? That song? And you just kind of, okay, this is really weird. What does it mean to me? Oh, it's just noises. It's just random noises put together. I've strayed too far in that thought. Let's return to typing. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, strange. Okay, so they're at a party. Everybody's talking over each other, which is kind of what a party is all about. Okay, so they're just apparently looking at famous people there, which is a normal thing to do. Embarrassing for Tom. <laughs> I think Polo is like the richest person sport imaginable. Like golf is expensive. Horse riding is expensive. Combining the two. Yeah. Just an observation about polo. <laughs> Water polo, on the other hand. <laughs> Very different sport. It's funny how those two sports share such similar names when they're like so different. Like you think what polo is on land <laughs> and then you imagine 
like, oh yeah, a water version of that. It's not not the same. Strange. Strange. Another page turn. Let's do it. Every page turn is a page turn closer to the end. The end of this book. Imagine if I was doing a really long book. <laughs> no. God. Will I do this again? I think I need to get to the end to answer that question. Can't really think about doing it again while you're still like doing it. It's like while you're running a marathon, you can't really be like, "Huh, should I run another marathon after this?" It's like no, just like finish this marathon. Or that's especially true when you're writing a book. When you're writing a long book, it's like, "Huh, should I write another novel?" It's like finish this novel first. <laughs> finish things. The most important lesson in life. Just get it done. Get it done as quickly as possible. And then you could work on the next one. It's like marathon. If I finish this as quickly as possible, then I could do another one. I don't know much about running. <laughs> or anything. Don't. Don't. Please don't talk to me. <laughs> So we're getting a sense of how they're all interacting at this party and Tom is being made to feel kind of small within Gatsby's. Gatsby has like home, home field advantage at the moment because he's literally home. And so Tom is kind of, for the first time in the story, kind of out of his comfort zone. So it's interesting. I mean, all this is very, very subtle, a lot of subtext, a lot of nuance to it. Um, but yeah, I think this scene is actually a really good way to approach um, this love triangle that is happening. It's like Tom wants to be proud, Gatsby has his you know, it's trying to do something. And Daisy's just kind of floating around, <laughs> trying to find happiness. It's remembered one of them? Remember should be one of them. One of the filter words, I mean. Like thought is one. Notice, yeah. Where am I? <laughs> Being surprised by his.
I don't like that Nick just has to be like kind of a part of this. It's kind of like the person setting this up, like he's working for them. I knew. New is a filter word. <laughs> I don't know if this one particularly needs to be cut out though. And I knew. In a half hour. I guess you could just cut it and and except for the half hour she'd been alone with Gatsby she wouldn't well, kind of ties things in I don't know it's tricky it's hard to be an editor I guess you want it to be as clean as possible but sometimes you need to have the seams to actually tie it together you can't remove the seams completely right when it's two things linking together you know what I mean knew that and I guess you could just cut it and except for the half hour she's been alone with Gatsby she wasn't hit. yeah I don't know I don't know if you need the I knew to be honest it reads fine without it Slump. Slump. Slump against my shoulder. with an O. 
Whew. Ah, all right, let's uh, let's keep going. Let's try to get to the end of uh, this page here. We have time. We have time. Time, time we have. What is time? <laughs> what is August? Where did the time go? Not too sure what they're talking about, but What are they even saying? I don't even know. Okay. Whew, let's um, let's do that part of the show where I time myself for a minute and see how how much I type. This is the most exciting part of the show. Everybody looks forward to it. Everybody enjoys it a lot, and that is why I continue to do it. Actually, I don't know if anybody enjoys this part of the show, but I get a kick out of it. And that's all that really matters these days. Just do what you enjoy. Um, okay, the rules are simple. I time myself for one minute. I try to type as many words as I can. My record was like in the 80s. I haven't gotten close to that since. And so I'm just saying anything above 60, I'm happy with. But if I do get 80, ooh <laughs> That would prove that I'm great. Uh, no, but I my neck hurts. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to tell you, but if if I don't do a good job, I'm blaming it on that. All right, oops, Oof, geez, I'm messing this up. Oh god, one minute and starting now.
extra stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Duck Noise. All right, well, I didn't, <laughs> it was one letter from finishing the word ultimate, which is a shame, so I won't count that. But everything looks pretty good. How many, how many do you think this is? Care for a guess? It's hard to tell. I'm gonna say it's at least 60. This feels like 60. 72. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. I've also almost written 30,000 words. Written as in copied. Which I feel like I've done more. <laughs> I feel like I've written more. Uh, 72. That isn't so bad. That's pretty close. It could have been 73. Almost one second away from 70. I'm like, how did I get 80 that one time? Did I cheat? You know when you like perform really well and you're like, this is way too good for me. I don't usually do this well. I probably cheated. I probably didn't do it correctly. <laughs> that would always happen in school when I'll be like, ah, what an easy assignment. And I realized there was like, three other pages of instructions that I was supposed to follow. I made it through. I'm still here. <laughs> despite despite all the all the errors of my ways throughout my life. I'm still here. And this is what I do now. <laughs> I type the great Gatsby. Even you. Little boy who can't follow the rules and a test, you, you too can grow up to be someone who can type The Great Gatsby. I'm just gonna try to finish this. I'm making so many mistakes, but it's auto-correcting. Like, can you imagine doing this on a typewriter? It would, it would just be so bad. I feel like I, I mentioned that before. I've done so many of these that I don't know what I have talked about. I end up talking about the same thing, like a, like a podcast <laughs> that has too many episodes. Saw is actually um, a filter word. I'm sure you could rewrite this uh, <laughs> in some way. Sorry, I'll under fail to understand. Another page turn. Every page turn is a page turn closer to the end. <laughs> That's just gonna be my mantra.
hair here. That's it. We're done. We're done for today. We are done for today. That is it. That is it. Always check to see the progress. It's almost there. It's like watching something download really slowly. <laughs> Remember back in the day? You might be too young. No, I don't exactly know how old you are, but back in the day when you're downloading music or a movie and it would take so long and it would take so long for the thing, the meter to move but that I had to put my mouse on like the end and then I'll come back and look at it to see if it actually moved because sometimes it would like freeze completely and then you have to restart it and start it all over and it would take hours and hours and sometimes even days to download an episode of like Family Guy or something. It's happening. Progress is happening here though. I can feel it. I can taste it. Mmm. Gatsby. The end. Almost the end. Well, thank you for joining me today. Looking for filter words. I'm glad we found a couple. Not like that eloquent what was it? No, evocative. Evocative words. Evocative sentences. God damn you. It's so subjective too, right? Just because it's not evocative for me, that didn't invoke my senses, maybe evoke someone else's. Who knows? That was a pretty boring first half of the chapter though. Not the second. This part was fine. A lot of, a lot of subtle interactions, right? Well... That's the Great Gatsby for you. That's the Great Gatsby. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me this week for another episode. It was a lot of fun talking with you. And wow, my neck it miraculously healed. No, it didn't. It feels better though. I think that it's like when you're feeling really gross and achy and then you go and exercise and you kind of get some blood pumping. I think that's what happened. Is it worse than when I began? I don't think so. I think it's better actually, which is strange. Strange. Could this be the ultimate cure for all diseases? Typing out the great Gatsby. <sighs> I'm not a doctor. I am not a doctor, but try it. I prescribe it prescribe it to you if you're feeling ill if you have if you have this uh, COVID-19 just type out the Great Gatsby <laughs> is that is that offensive I don't know you gotta watch what I say about this stuff I don't know, spread like fake news <laughs> misinformation if, imagine if someone really believed that It's too hot. It's getting too hot in here. Okay, that's it. Thank you for joining me. I will see you next week for another episode.